Hi, Tammy. I'm going to give you a little help on your hummingbird. Um, I know that what you need help on is not starting over, but I wanted to show you a little bit of how I would have done it. Uh, when you draw hummingbirds, uh, they have regions, uh, even in the feathers. So you're going to see that I count the feathers in the wing, and there's 10. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for big changes in direction uh, and drawing those first. They're almost like landmarks. So instead of just going top to bottom, I might hop around a little bit. I also am putting the numbers there so I can remember how many I have. All right, so I'm going to zoom past this to the next part. Okay, you can see that I have uh, my drawing done. I'm going to get ready to start painting. Uh, that, that tape roll I threw down was to say, uh, make sure to tape down your work all the time. I'm not going to because I'm just doing this really quick. So one, uh, one technique that can be really helpful when you have a lot of fine detail uh, and you have to do a good drawing underneath your watercolor is to go over your lines uh, with a nice sharp color pencil. You don't have to draw every single bit. And then you can lighten your pencil lines and you'll see little pink lines instead of pencil or pencil color. So that's just totally optional. You didn't seem to have a problem with your drawing or anything like that. I just wanted to show you this. Like, like I said at the beginning of class, I normally uh, only allow two new students in a class. So uh, I could have given you a little bit more help. So I feel, I feel bad. And that's why I want to go ahead and show you the whole process. All right, so now I'm gonna do uh, my wet into wet background. One of the things that goes wrong when people try wet into wet is that everything turns gray. When you have that many colors, uh, you have to think about the color wheel. And when you put your colors in, they have to be next to each other on the color wheel. Uh, another easy way is to think, is this a warm color or a cool color, right? So uh, my green can be next to a blue, but I wouldn't want to put it next to a purple because there's too much red in it and it would turn brown or gray. So you just want to be mindful. Uh, so I'm going to add the water onto the paper. Uh, my water is a little blue green. It's not a big deal. Uh, actually, it'll help you see how I do it. So my watercolor is fairly small. If you had a larger one, uh, I found that a sponge brush works really good for this part and you can sort of uh, pre-dampen your paper. And then I'm just kind of dropping in with little taps. Now I chose the blue because it was the safest and there's a lot of it. So the majority of this is blue and green. Uh, the hard part is that little section of pink and the, the sections of brown and yellow. You'll, you'll see that I do those last. And as I'm adding in color, I'm going up to my lines. When I put the water in, I didn't. Uh, that was just for safety, but now I can. So I can put that uh, magenta next to blue, right? Because the magenta is like a red purple. Uh, so it's kind of a cool color. Uh, so when you're doing sunsets, this is a big deal, right? Uh, so always keep that in mind and you can create transition colors. So you'll, you'll see sometimes that I will add a little blue. Like right now I'm going to do orange, but I want to cool it down a little bit. So I added a little bit, I, maybe it was purple and brown. That way it's not a huge jump. Uh, and orange and blue are complementary colors. They're opposites, so they automatically would make gray or, or a brown. Now, one of the, the benefits to adding these 
more uh, dangerous colors uh, later or after you've done all the big ones is that your paper is starting to dry already, which means that they won't mix as much. So you're, you're a little bit safer. It still may happen, but it won't be as easy for it to happen. And I hope you notice that I'm not uh, spreading things around a lot. Uh, sometimes things have turned gray when I didn't want them to, but I'm just letting it be. Now, if it really, really bothers me, I can use a tissue to get rid of it. Okay, so now uh, inside the bird, you want to look beneath your dark colors. Uh, so, right, the, the feathers there are mostly black or like a dark purple or burgundy, but what's underneath is red. And in, in watercolor, you're, you're preserving two things for as long as you can. It's uh, the white of your paper for your highlights and the intensity of your color. Uh, the more you layer, the more it's going to get grayed down. So when later when we add the darker feathers to the, the stomach of the bird, uh, that yellow will get toned down already. So we don't need to make a yellow gray. We wanna keep that as intense and as pure as we can because it will just gray out on its own as we work. Uh, a lot of times students will start uh, with the dull colors and then they can't get brighter after that. So you'll never get as bright as this again. So you wanna lay it down first and then add the other stuff on top. So I'm doing a little wet into wet in the wing, and now I'm going to let it dry. So to help you get some definition in your watercolors, you can use uh, watercolor pencils or color pencils or uh, these special brush pens that you fill with water and come with different tips. So I'm going to be showing you those. And don't, don't feel weird about adding them to your watercolor. Uh, Watercolor painters do that all the time. Uh, so watercolor pencils, if you haven't tried them, are amazing. Uh, they act and behave just like color pencils until you get them wet and then they melt. Now both of these have wax in them, so you want to do it near the end. You don't want to start with these in the beginning. Um, all those hand gestures you're seeing is because I was talking to myself while filming. <laughs> and uh, I also want to apologize for the autofocus doing very strange things right now. It's pulsating the video. Uh, so those things are all really cool. I'm a huge fan of watercolor pencils. I love them. But I also just like using my brush. Uh, when this brush is new, it's really great because you can do super thin lines and super thick lines with the same brush. And that's, I don't know, I like that. I like not having to, to switch gears, but you cannot get the exact precision, you know, when you're working on something this small with a brush that big, it's a little tricky. So I'm using a gray watercolor pencil and I'm gonna start defining those feathers on the stomach. And after I do it with watercolor pencil, I'm gonna do it with a brush so you can see uh, the different feel. You can also start to see uh, what I meant about uh, your colors are going to get grayed down automatically. <laughs> now, literally, we're putting some gray over that yellow. Uh, but because we're going to get so much feather detail there, that yellow is going to be obscured a lot, and it'll, it'll mellow out. So uh, I'm putting it on with my brush, and you can see there's a lot more uh, water and paint and things that could go wrong, right? Uh, I blotted it because it was just too strong. So when you're working on something uh, that small and you need to lighten your color, what do you do? Because usually we add water to lighten the color, but you don't want that big and drippy. So the secret is to uh, dry off your brush a little bit before you actually go and touch it to your paper. So I usually wipe on a paper towel. I just added a few little, uh, little hairs and darker areas with my pencil. I'm gonna add in some brown in there too. 
So you could potentially finish the whole thing in watercolor pencil. Uh, but I would, I would try to do as much as you can with paint. The key is just keeping things separate and in control, right? Easier said than done. Uh, so going to yours, um, I'm going to show you a couple things you could try. Uh, so we lost a lot of definition of the feathers on the stomach. So I'm using this uh, color pencil. Uh, it's like a light yellow cream. Uh, it seemed to work, but the white did not. So you'll have to experiment. I know for a fact that uh, a white chalk pencil works great in watercolors. So you could try that if you have one in like a charcoal set or something. Uh, the other thing you can do is to actually remove some paint and bring back some light. So right now, uh, just for fun, <laughs> I'm removing my paint uh, so that you can see how. So you just use plain water. My water is really dirty. Don't use dirty water because you could have an accident. But you can see I just obliterated and removed my entire stomach feathers. <laughs> All right. I hope some of that will help and I'll see you in class. Bye.